Last week, this channel dropped an episode of Die Shrink that involved a lengthy conversation about how, based on the RTX 5090's disappointing performance, people should really temper their expectations for the RTX 5080 and especially the RTX 5070 series. In fact, I thought this point was so important that I had our team put out a short that was part of this conversation to the general public. And today, well today, we saw those predictions unfortunately come true. But man, I have to admit that I wasn't expecting stuff like this. The RTX 5080 somehow losing to the 4080 Super and 4080 Non Super in some games. Or this, a ray tracing uplift that is somehow lower than the raster uplift. Completely in the face of this idea that NVIDIA wants to progress ray tracing performance. They seem to forget it for this generation. And to the point that some games even saw a regression in ray tracing. Compared to, heck, even the 4070 Super. This is just bad. And so today, I don't want to dwell on the absolutely terrible performance for the RTX 5080 or its terrible value. What I want to talk about is what this means for the upcoming RTX 5070 Ti and 5070, and then even leak some new performance details for AMD's upcoming RX 9070 XT to show you how it is likely to stack up to NVIDIA's mid-range Blackwell cards that will launch over the next two months. All right, so first, expectations for the RTX 5070 and 5070 Ti based on how the 5080 and 5090 have stacked up in benchmarks. Now, usually when I do scratch math for the performance of upcoming graphics cards, as long as they have similar architectures, all I do is simply average the like core and clock speed uplifts with the bandwidth uplifts. So for example, with the RTX 5090, I would have expected an around 52% performance uplift, which is why on Broken Silicon, I would always say, I don't know, probably 40 to 60%. But instead, we didn't get that. We got a 30% uplift if I average tech power up and hardware unbox 4K results. And then for the RTX 5080, I would have expected maybe a, up to a 25% uplift based on the difference in specs. But instead, we got a 14% uplift. And so, yeah, if we average the uplift we got, you know, divide that by the uplift that was expected, we can see that the RTX 5090 performed 14% lower than expected, and the RTX 5080 performed 9% lower. So let's just average that. Let's just say for upcoming Blackwell cards, we should expect around 11.5% lower result than expected. And so what that means is for the 5070 Ti, I would be hoping it would be 16.5% faster, but now... After seeing 5080 reviews, I'm expecting it to only be 3% faster than the 4070 Ti Super, which is just pathetic as a generational uplift. And then for the 5070, do I expect it to be faster than a 4090? No. Now I expect it to be maybe 21% faster, which means it'll be lucky to match the 4070 Ti on average. And look, this is not a firm prediction. It's napkin math, you know, eyeballing it. So plus minus five or 10%, whatever. But this gets you in the ballpark of what to expect now. And it is very underwhelming. The numbers don't lie. Something is up with Blackwell, in my opinion. Any notion that there was simply diminishing returns uh, with the 5090 or that the 5090 was too big to scale its performance to gaming, that's proven wrong to today because the RTX 5080, a graphics card with less than half the CUDA cores of the 5090, also did not scale performance as much as we should have expected. And so I don't think it's diminishing returns with Blackwell. I just think Jensen phoned it in with this generation's gains. And I have to say, it does make me start to wonder if these underwhelming results for Blackwell well, they're going to lead to the RX 9070 XT relatively performing way better than people expected. And I want to outline why by leaking some new performance details about AMD's upcoming RDNA 4 graphics cards. And then also leak to you very disappointing supply quotes that I have from retailers about the launch of the 5080 and the 5090. 
But first, an ad from Micro Center. Today's piece of content is sponsored by Micro Center. And starting January 30th, they are doing a month of BYO. Once again, below, you can find links to check out great deals on everything about building your own build this month and also an ability to sign up for early access to their new Santa Clara location, which if you just sign up for early access, you'll get a free 128 gigabyte flash drive. And well, there will also be links in the description to latest tech news from Micro Center and also a link to a place where you can trade in your current GPUs if you want to upgrade to the RTX 5000 series or our RX 9000 series this year. And, and actually, on that note, they offer an exclusive trading program for working graphics cards that you've purchased from Micro Center, ensuring you can get same-day value for your graphics cards if you keep it within the Micro Center family. And they're even uh, happy to take other old tech that you have as well and recycle it or help you donate it to charity. And remember... Just clicking on the links below helps the channel a ton and purchasing something through them, like maybe a new RTX 5000 or RX 9000 graphics card, helps even more. So support Moore's Law is Dead by checking out Micro Center during BYO month today. All right. So we've just established the ballpark performance of where the 5070 and 5070 Ti should land. How do they compare to the RX 9000 series is what you should be wondering next. And what you are seeing on screen here is a part of the documentation that I haven't shown yet from that data I put some info out in a recent video. You see, in a recent video, I detailed tons of internal testing results from within AMD that were conducted a month ago as from what I can tell, AMD was working on improving and better optimizing their drivers for the RX 9000 series month after month. And yeah, you can see that right here, they are targeting about a 3% win over the RTX 4080 Founders Edition for the 9070 XT. Now, to be fair, this is just a target. I think it is plausible that AMD could exceed a 3% win over the 4080 Founders Edition by a few percentage points or something if they really hit it out of the park in these final couple of months of polish leading up to their March launch. But I will say that I have seen results from month after month, and they're only gaining 1% or so a month for the past few months. And so I wouldn't expect them to really exceed 1.03 times a 4080 and raster much. And it is plausible they could fall short of that by single digits as well. But because it could go either way, I, I think that's a fair proxy. And so if I pull up hardware unbox 4K averages from their RTX 5080 review, and I overlay their performance targets from AMD, we can see that AMD absolutely stacks up favorably with previous generation high-end cards. But here's where it gets more fun. What if I add the 5070 series estimates to this? Well, as you can see, it looks like it could be an absolute bloodbath for NVIDIA here. In fact, if we follow my 30% rule that I theorized with the 7800 XT launch, I'd argue AMD could get away with 649 and 499 with the 9070 XT and 9070 respectively if they wanted to hit a price point that's aggressive enough to sell well. Although, personally, I think just 599 and 499 would be a much cleaner victory. Oh, and uh, by the way, going back to this chart, notice this too. The 5080, at least in this average here, in this estimation, is less than 10% ahead of the 9070 XT. For anyone who says even 649 would be too much to charge, AMD would be giving you 90% the performance of an NVIDIA card for a third less money while also offering the same amount of RAM. Now, remember, there's a lot of napkin math that went on with what I just showed you, and I just used hardware and box for the chart there. Who knows? Maybe in hardware and box results, it'll be off 5% in one direction, tech power up 5% in another direction. That's just one example. It shouldn't be taken as this is exactly to a percentage point to the decimal where it's going to go, but I'm pretty confident what I'm seeing here because I'll tell you this as well, the numbers for tech power ups, cyberpunk ray tracing... I have basically the exact same, almost to the decimal point results from AMD in a Cyberpunk 4K ray tracing test. And on screen here is where the 9070 XT roughly landed and where the 9070 roughly landed, showing that at least tech power-ups numbers line up with AMD's own benchmarks. And those benchmarks suggest that AMD is almost catching up to NVIDIA and ray tracing this generation, which is just astounding. But all right, 
Now I can already hear some keyboard warriors typing in the comments in all caps, AMD missed a golden opportunity by not launching this beast in January. But what are they actually missing? I think it's time to talk about the really lack of a launch going on this week with NVIDIA with the RTX 5090 and RTX 5080. Do you really think AMD is missing anything when I show you these quotes from retail sources of mine? Source number one here, who works at a major US retailer, tells me that at least as of this evening, this evening when the video is coming out, they still have not received any 5090s for their store. Now, that could change, and I've heard this from other people before too, that they have had last-minute deliveries on launch days before. I believe Battle Mage may have pulled that off at some retailers in the U.S., like morning of arrivals or maybe even afternoon arrivals of Battle Mage GPUs at stores. Or uh, I, I don't remember which NVIDIA launch has happened, but it's happened before, so look, it could happen. There could be a handful of 5090s that show up at this retailer's location tomorrow morning or something in time for those people camping out in tents. But the fact that they're not there yet the night before is just completely shocking to me. And this person thinks that even if they do get that, they're not getting any indication they'll have any real supply of the 5090 until March when the 9070 XT launches. Anyways, moving on to source number two, this person who works at a major U.S. retailer as well told me that they have around 60 RTX 5080s ready for sale tomorrow, but that it's a lot less than the around 100 RTX 4080s they had a couple years ago for launch day, and that they wanted to put the stock situation this way, that they were told employees can't buy the 5080 or the 5090. If you work there, they won't let you check out with a Blackwell graphics card this week, and they haven't enforced a rule like this since the RTX 30 series, telling you which launch you should compare Blackwell to. Now, source number three here says that launch supply for the RTX 5090 is basically non-existent. This is a major retailer here, the huge presence that says, genuinely, they are wondering if they will even have a thousand for all of North America for launch day. And while the 5080 situation is better, it still looks like around half the supply the 4080 had at its launch. And oh, from what they are seeing loaded up in the um, back end of their online store, the 5080 is usually going to be around 1100 to 1300 dollars, and the 5090, 2300 to 2600 dollars. And final source here, source number four, the only thing this retailer, which is a smaller one in the U.S. to be fair, in this example, uh, will have for launch are pre-builds with 5080s in very low numbers, and so. I mean, you can argue AMD isn't competing with NVIDIA in January and that they missed an opportunity, but I might argue that NVIDIA really isn't competing until March anyways, unless, I don't know, they do some flood of 5070 series cards in February, a month before RDNA 4 launches. And I say that because this is something NVIDIA is infamous for doing before AMD launches, but if they do that, well, we'll just have to see. That's not what's happening this week. And so at least as of January... I don't think AMD is missing any opportunity, but stay tuned for updates in future videos. But for now, that is going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, please remember to comment below for the algorithm. Tell me what you think about what I told you all today. And also to like it, to share it. Sharing helps so much. And please, half of you aren't subscribed as far as I know. Please make sure you're subscribed to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you do not miss those upcoming updates about supply and performance of new graphics cards. And of course, also consider supporting Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. The next guest will be Vex. You can ask him free questions if you join the Patreon right now and it will come out early next week. And then of course, you'll get access to tons of die shrinks that never have any ads. There's a huge back catalog for you there. We cannot do this without our patrons. Having a Patreon allows Moore's Law is Dead to be independent and not care what anyone says. Just try to report what we believe is true. And well, as I always say, if you made it this far into the video, at a minimum though, thank you for watching.